John Paul DeJore is a humble man with an amazing rags to riches story. He's the founder of not one, not two, but three multi billion dollar companies, effectively building a new empire every decade since the 1980s. Immense fortunes were not a constant in DeJore's life, and his early years on the streets of Los Angeles humbled him. From living out of his car to owning multi million dollar mansions, DeJoria's name is attached to a couple of the most successful businesses in American history. Born to immigrant parents, an Italian father, and a Greek mother, DeJoria grew up impoverished in 1940s Los Angeles. His father left them when John was young. The DeJoria children were in and out of foster care as their mother tried to support them. At nine years old, DeJoria came home full time and sold newspapers and Christmas cards with his brother to support the family. Through all their struggles, DeJoria's mother remained a charitable woman. In an interview with entrepreneur, John recalled when his mother gave the DeJoria brothers a dime to donate to the Salvation Army. They were children, they didn't understand the impact one dime could have on a family worse off than they were. DeJoria understood that there are always those less fortunate than him, whether he had $10 or $10 million. The Navy is where DeJoria developed much needed structure. He spent time aboard the USS Hornet, a seemingly minor fact that'll play into his future business endeavors more than he'd ever know. After the Navy, DeJoria found his talent for sales as a door to door encyclopedia salesman. Of course, not every Los Angeles neighbor was as excited about the encyclopedia. And even though door after door slammed in his face, DeJore remained as enthusiastic on door number 100 as he was on the first knock of the day. DeJore attributes his success to his headstrong mother. DeJore was in his early 20s when things seemingly hit rock bottom. He was married with a two-year-old son and in between jobs at the time, came home to their second-floor apartment to find a goodbye note from his wife. He called her departure orchestrated, as she hadn't paid any of the bills in three months. Final notices were ripped up and DeJoria was kicked out of the apartment. Left with no way to go, one of DeJoria's biker friends offered to help. He owned a broken-down Rolls-Royce and let father and son live out of the car until they could get back on their feet. DeJoria slept in the front seat, his son stayed in the back. And although it seemed as if they'd never crawl out of this hole, DeJoria said to himself, if you're this down and this out, you can only go up. Through the late 60s and 70s, DeJoria worked whatever odd jobs he could to provide for his son, something his father never did for him. DeJoria found a niche in the hair care industry in the 1980s when he met Paul Mitchell, a stylist and shampoo salesman pushing his own line of one-use shampoo. They'd known each other for nine years. Paul knew hair, DeJoria knew business. Together, they knew it was time to go into business together, and Paul Mitchell Systems was born. Early on, DeJoria learned that it always goes down before it goes up. Paul Mitchell Systems had an investor willing to give them $500,000 to get off the ground. With such a significant investment coming through the door, DeJoria dropped everything he was doing and put all his energy towards making Paul Mitchell Systems what it is today. However, the investor never showed up when DeJoria drove down to the bank to meet him. Back at square one, DeJoria and Mitchell raised $700 to start the company, half coming from Paul and the other coming courtesy of DeJoria's mother. For the times she dropped in the Salvation Army's bucket, that $350 proved to be the greatest donation she'd ever make. At the time, DeJoria was more concerned about surviving than he was becoming a billionaire. In fact, the thought of being a billionaire wasn't even in his mind at all. All he wanted at that time was a place to call home and food on his table. He would have been happy if that's all that ever came of Paul Mitchell Systems. So what was so special about the product that sent them soaring higher than they could have ever dreamed? Today, John Paul Mitchell Systems or JPMS products are sold in over 150,000 beauty salons across 87 countries. However, all that success came with time. In the 70s, salons were using shampoos that required two or three washes. More washes meant more product, and more product meant more money. So when DeJoria came knocking offering a single-use shampoo that was better than anything on the market, 
Los Angeles beauty salons bought it right up. Perhaps the funniest part of the story is the apparent lack of creativity when naming their first three products. JPMS launched with three products – Shampoo 1, Shampoo 2, and The Conditioner. An intelligent person such as DeJoria wouldn't name his products in such a way without good reason. We imagine he'd looked stylist in the eyes and said, this is the only product you'll ever need. DeJoria can even recall the exact moment he remembers thinking, we made it. Paul Mitchell Systems was two years old and they were able to pay all their bills on time. DeJoria and Mitchell each had $2,000 in the bank and thought, wow, we made it. Little did they know how big Paul Mitchell Systems would eventually become. Sadly, Paul wouldn't live long enough to see JPMS soar to astronomical heights. He passed away from pancreatic cancer in 1989. DeJoria lost his business partner and closest friend that day. But that didn't stop him from pushing forward, carrying Paul's legacy into the 21st century and beyond. You can probably say that Paul's death was another driving force for DeJoria. That same year, in 1989, DeJoria founded Patron. Yes, a half-Greek, half-Italian man is the founder of the most popular tequila company in the world. So how did the then Heike icon find his way into the tequila business? DeJoria was friends with a man named Martin Crowley. At the time, Crowley had gone bankrupt, and DeJoria helped him get back on his feet. Crowley's newfound work in architecture brought him down to Mexico, and DeJoria, now something of an aristocrat himself, wanted to know what people like him were drinking south of the border. He asked Crowley to bring him a taste, and he returned from Mexico with the smoothest tequila DeJoria had ever tasted. Crowley claimed to know a guy who could make it even smoother, and DeJoria wanted in. They found a glass blower who designed the bottle we're all familiar with today, and DeJoria added his flair to the final design. Patron was so good that DeJoria decided to sell it for $37 a bottle. At the time, the most expensive tequila on the shelf was going for $14 a bottle. Everyone around him raved about how good it was, but didn't believe anybody would pay that much for it. Their distributor Jim Beam was one of those naysayers. They didn't think DeJoria would ever sell more than 20,000 cases a year. At 12 bottles per case and $37 per bottle, Jim Beam's estimated Patron sales were only $8.8 million. Jim Beam was a billion-dollar company, so those Patron estimates were pennies on their bottom line. So DeJoria dropped them and took distribution into his own hands. Today, Patron is the second largest tequila brand in the United States, falling short of Jose Cuervo. With $1.37 billion in 2020 sales, Jim Beam must be kicking themselves for doubting DeJoria. Almost 30 years later in 2018, DeJoria cashed in on his tequila endeavor, selling his 70% stake in Patron to Bacardi Limited for $5.1 billion. Perhaps DeJoria sold off his Patron shares as he prepared to shift gears once again. In 2018, the 74-year-old co-founded Rocket Group, a self-described next-generation global media company specializing in a little bit of everything, like phones, electric Formula One cars, energy drinks, comic strips, and alcohol. DeJoria has become something of an icon in pop culture. In 2013, he pulled on the public's heartstrings when he appeared on Shark Tank and invested $150,000 in the Tree TB, an innovative water irrigation unit capable of saving hundreds of thousands of gallons of water every year. The other sharks pulled out of the deal when the Tree TB founder wouldn't raise his unit price, believing that farmers wouldn't be able to afford it. Tutoria loved the fact that he cared about the farmers and was more than happy to give him the money. Tajoria appeared as himself in the 2008 comedy Don't Mess with the Zohan and played a fictionalized John Paul Mitchell in 1999's The Big Tease. You may have also spotted him in season 2 of Weeds. With all his success, Tajoria always remembered the first time he dropped in the Salvation Army's bucket. His motto is, success unshared is failure. And he's certainly lived up to it in every philanthropic aspect of his life. 
Today, DeJoria donates to about 159 different charities and even signed a giving pledge with 150 other billionaires, including Bill Gates and Richard Branson. Those who signed the pledge agree to contribute half of their wealth to charitable causes. The giving pledge was founded by Bill and Melinda Gates and Warren Buffett back in 2010. DeJoria has been an animal lover since day one and prides himself on having never tested any of his products on animals. It was their dedication to fighting animal testing that put JPMS on the map all those years ago. With $700 to their name, John and Paul had no idea how high their fortunes would soar 